Hi, welcome to Gardening, a careers podcast you should listen to if you want to grow your career online and offline. Hi, my name is May Ping, and I'm a professional career coach and international speaker with more than a decade of experience at some of the biggest companies in the world. To learn more about what I do, visit mayping.com. That's M-E-I-P-H-I-N-G dot com. All right, let's jump right into today's episode. Hello and welcome to another episode of my Grow Your Career Online and Offline podcast. So we are in week four of my 30-day client success story series where I share with you yeah, client successes who have worked with me either in a one-on-one capacity or even in group training as well. So we are in the second half of the um, success stories where I really deep dive into my clients' struggles and later successes in their job search process. So today, I actually want to cover a really interesting topic, and it is actually around resume. So I work with a lot of corporate professionals to position their value very clearly in their resumes. And um, as a former hiring manager at an international bank, I have seen hundreds of resumes in my corporate career and even as a career coach nowadays. So in today's story, I actually want to share with you the worst resume I have ever seen. So like I said, I've seen like hundreds of resumes, but this um, this particular version of resume I received from a coaching client um, about six months ago. And honestly, if I were to give a rating out of 10, one being the worst, 10 being the best, I read this resume probably a 2 out of 10. And that is really, really low. And in comparison to the hundreds of resumes I've seen, I think it's definitely one of the worst. So let me break it down to you, right? Why I think that resume, it's a really, really bad one. And I think this is something that a lot of people don't realize um, that a resume also creates a professional impression of you, right? So while you think that your resume is very clear, um, the hiring manager, recruiter, and HR might not necessarily think the same. And if you have never been in any of those positions before, you might actually be missing out on um, that kind of perspective that is actually really important for you to make sure that you tailor your resume accordingly. So anyway, back to this client's story. Um, she was looking for a job for quite some time. And in fact, she was one of the... Um, the ones on the dean's list, right? So it's also one of those cases where she did a lot better than her peers academically, but somehow when she started looking for a job, she couldn't really find any, while most of her peers have already gotten a role. So obviously that is a really frustrating process. Um, But when she came to me, right, um, before sending me her resume she she gave me all these background which sounds like you know everything sounds like she's doing it correctly but the moment i opened her resume i was really quite shocked because if there's one way i could describe it it's almost like looking at a newspaper cutting or a leaflet that just has too much information that uh, to be honest I don't even know where to start. When I first looked at it, I was so confused and I actually thought that it was, it looked like scrap paper. It looked like, it looked like something that you were just trying to squeeze every single thing in without giving it much thought, right? So she actually fell into this, um, what I call the laundry list syndrome when preparing her resume. So what that means is that she's trying to squeeze every single thing that she has done in one page. And I think this is sometimes due to the incorrect advice that, uh, again, I'm not sure where, like, where you guys are getting these resume and career tips from, but make sure that you speak to a proper hiring manager because I can tell you as a former hiring manager, like if that come, if if I actually receive that on my desk, I will not even bother. I will directly throw it into the dustbin because it was so confusing. It had so much information It just looked so crammed and something that's not easy to read, right? It's it's pointless. So sometimes I think we underestimate the importance of simplicity in a resume. And um, I think now when you go to, you know, you when you go online on YouTube, Google or whatever, you might be able to download a bunch of like resume templates that supposedly guarantee 
apparently the best results. But in most instances, what I've seen is um, these resumes are focused on beauty over functionality over real value. So I think a lot of times like younger professionals particularly or even those who have not um, looked for a job in a long time where they might not be more uh, they might not be aware of the other modern job search techniques or they have not actually been a HR recruiter hiring manager position before so they don't actually know yeah what we're actually looking for so for this particular client I, I was really so shocked like the first five minutes I saw her resume and I actually asked her like why did you squeeze everything in so she told me that number one um some she was downloading all these templates from online apparently she was getting advice from um I'm not going to name names, but she's getting advice from people who told her that this is the best idea. And she was so fixated on squeezing her resume into one page. But if we were to actually break down the content that she has put in, in most instances, they were so vague because she was trying to squeeze it into one page. What then is compromised is the real value, the real achievements that she had, what she actually did in the job. That one, she didn't really focus. There was just a lot of like, other stuff which I think are really irrelevant so she she also had this other problem of like un, unable to tell what are the important points and what are the relevant points to put in her resume so again what I'm calling this the laundry list syndrome is something that I see a lot in job seekers and professionals who don't know how to edit and curate and position their resume for the next job that they want. So they just put in a laundry list and just hope, hope, right? Hope is not a strategy, guys. They hope that the hiring manager will just spend the half day or like half an hour just to read every single word. This does not happen. At the end of the day, your resume needs to present a good first impression. And first impression comes from two things. First is visually to make sure that it is formatted nicely. It looks easy to read and pleasant to read in the first place. And then secondly, the content, particularly for the resume summary portion, which I teach my clients to write with my very specific formula, the resume summary portion, or you could call it um, objective or like personal statement, personal mission, whatever, that needs to be very clear because that is your six second pitch to draw interest. So if you don't have any of those two things, that is the baseline. If you don't even have those two things, then it is very, it's going to be very difficult to actually attract attention from a hiring manager, right? Don't forget, right? A hiring manager could be, not could be, they are busy. So when I was a hiring manager, I had my day to day job in, you know, and at the same time, I need to review a bunch of resumes. I need to do a lot of interviews. So you need to make sure that like you're making it easy. For the hiring manager to read the points that you have in your resume and make sure that your value is clear make sure that it is easy for the hiring manager to understand why they want to hire you right how would you fit in the team these are really really important questions to answer rather than you know just having a laundry list of um, points that may or may not make sense trying to squeeze everything in a resume and making the whole thing so difficult to read it actually doesn't really work so what I did with this client is actually just a one-time resume review. What I did with her was actually give her a lot of the hiring manager's perspective because she has been getting advice from like, I don't know, Google, YouTube. She was asking some of her friends. She was asking people on the internet, which may or may not have any real experiences hiring people, right? So if you're getting advice from people who are who I never actually have those kind of experiences, never in that kind of position or seniority, guess what? You are getting a bunch of theory and that is something I think you really need to recognize because yes, everybody has an opinion, but not every opinion actually works for your particular situation. So just make sure that you talk to the right people. And for this particular client, I actually went through with her section by section, telling her that this is the impression that is being created if you write it like this, if you present it like this. And in most instances, a lot of the comments were, yeah, I mean, the feedback were negative and it's just things that she has to work on, right? So I also showed her some examples on like what a good format or template should look like, what a good summary section should look like, some of the things that she should remove from her resume and some of the things that she should also include. So all these things, right? Well, it sounds so basic, but you'll be surprised to know that most people find it actually very difficult to 
put a quality resume together, particularly a resume who uh, a resume that positions them themselves for the next job that they are really looking for. So if you are really actually looking for a better role, right, a, a job that pays more, has more exposure, has more learning opportunities, maybe a promotion, something a little bit more senior, guess what? You need to make sure that your resume is positioned accordingly and you know, it's time to actually go back to the basics, right? Make sure that the format, again, is very simple, it's very clear. You are getting rid of like irrelevant information that doesn't make sense and create confusion. And lastly, make sure that you also avoid the laundry list syndrome of like trying to put every single thing that you have done in your resume. It doesn't really work like that anymore. So always focus on value, focus on what you can actually bring to the table and why would a hiring manager want to hire you. So all these are really like the more foundation and baseline considerations you should take account, uh, take into account when you're putting a resume together. So for this particular client from a 2 out of 10 rating, after she made her amendments, right, I'd say that, I'd say that if you could reach like a 9 out of 10, like 8, and a half to nine nine out of ten it is actually really really good but uh, for clients who work with me a little bit longer i am a i'm a perfectionist so i want to achieve like a 9.5 or 10 out of 10 in most instances but this client has also been very successful as well after the resume review session she managed to get multiple interviews that eventually landed the job quite quickly also so she also dropped me a note on linkedin telling me that oh maybe your method really works because i um the moment I updated my resume um, with your suggestions, I actually got a lot of interview calls and I'm really excited about that. So yeah, so that's the that's the story. And like I said, right, I think we sometimes underestimate the importance of like simplicity, importance of actually getting the main point across rather than yeah, getting fixated with like all these fancy templates and all these like um trying to squeeze everything in, you know. Um, yeah, because if, like I said, if you've never been a HR recruiter hiring manager before, then what you are trying to do, it's your assumption of how the hiring process works, but not the reality. So that's why I have actually found myself giving a lot of like hiring managers perspectives when I do my one-on-one -on -one resume review sessions with my clients. So like the first 10 minutes, even before we go into like making any amendments, it is just about what is the impression that the hiring manager is going to get when they look at your resume. So I, I think that's really the biggest value add because I think like probably less than 5% of people in the world are actually hiring managers. So these are the kind of um, opinions that you can uh, probably get from very selected people and most tips and like advice out there are just, yeah, theory for lack of a better word. So that's the story. Um, I hope that I... I hope that my client success story has inspired you and also empowered you to really think about what makes a quality resume and also and maybe inspires you to take that next step to actually go and look at your own resume if you have been struggling with job search and actually ask yourself, is your value positioned very clearly across? And I think that is um, the starting point for you. So with that, I hope that you enjoy this episode. And if you find this episode helpful and the tips shared actionable as well, feel free to share it with a friend. And you can also tag me at Meeting Lim on LinkedIn. So with that, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode. For more awesome content like this, remember to like and subscribe. Also, head on over to my website, meiping.com, that's M-E-I-P-H-I-N-G.com, and subscribe to my weekly newsletter for more career growth and personal development tips. You can find the links in the description box below. Once again, you're listening to Got A Ping, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!